Hello and welcome to the first of our Access 2 video series from Wadham College in Oxford. In this channel we'll be breaking down the application process for anyone applying to university in the UK as well as for those of you applying to the University of Oxford where the application process has a few extra steps. In this first series we'll be tackling the personal statement. We've collected all of our advice and guidance into six short videos. In this first video we are going to look at the function of the personal statement more generally. In video two, we'll look at getting started and gathering the materials that you'll need. And then in the third video, we'll actually tackle the blank page, how to go from a blank page to your first draft. In video four, we will look at expanding our ideas into paragraphs and look at examples to see what makes an effective personal statement. Some of our undergraduate students at Wadham have very kindly given us their personal statements to use as examples. In our penultimate video, we will go through some writing tips to guide you through your future drafts. And then we'll round it off in video six with some finishing touches, refining and crafting using further drafts and a little bit of editing advice as well. Each video is set up as a mini workshop. So have a pen and paper ready. There'll be lots of opportunities to take notes and some activities as well. If you are further along with crafting your personal statement, head straight to the video that is most relevant. We have four example personal statements available to support this video series. They can be found on our website or there is a link in the description. So let's get started with personal statement fundamentals and some key facts. The personal statement is part of your UCAS application, which you use to apply to courses at universities in the UK. It is one component of your application sitting alongside information about your academic achievements, as well as a reference from your teacher. Some universities may also ask for additional information after you've submitted your UCAS application. Certainly many courses at Oxford do ask for additional information, whether that is taking an admissions test, sending in examples of your previous work, and then for all courses, if you're shortlisted, students are invited for interview as well. The personal statement has an upper limit of 4,000 characters or 47 lines of text. To give an idea of what that actually looks like, on the right here are two examples from our current undergraduates. As you can see, it's about one page of type text and people will organize their personal statements in different ways, but it's commonly around four to seven paragraphs. Now, the personal statement is a part of the application process, which is in your own voice. It's where tutors can hear about you, about your interests, about your motivation to study the course and about the skills that you would bring as an undergraduate. You write one personal statement and that goes to each of the universities that you're applying to. We'll talk about that more in video six. The deadline for your personal statement is the same as for the rest of your UCAS application. However, there is a difference depending on which universities you're applying to. Generally, the application deadline is the 15th of January. It's the same date each year. However, if you're applying for Oxford, Cambridge, medicine and dentistry related courses, there is an earlier deadline on the 15th of October. Now, if you are applying to those courses and you're applying to other universities that don't have the earlier deadline, as soon as you press submit, that application will then go to all of the courses that you're applying for. Just to recap, a personal statement can tell a university three main things. Why you're interested in the subject, how well you are suited to their course, and what skills you would bring as a student. To get started in conveying that effectively, we can start to think about a few things. First, the universities want to know why you are interested, so we can take the time to focus on what sparks our own interests. This might be whole subjects at school, specific areas of one subject, or maybe even completely new subjects that we don't currently study. We can also start to look at what universities offer and think about not only which subject, but which courses align with our interests. Secondly, we can look at what students study on these courses, again to choose courses that align with our own interests. That might be specific modules that you can take or the format that the learning takes. And finally, we can think about what skills might be useful for that course and reflect on how the things we're doing in and outside of class are developing skills that would be really useful once we start a university. So I promised some tasks at the beginning of the video. This is the first one. It is very quick. If you would like to pause the video, please do and come back when you're ready. If you're thinking about university, there are probably certain areas or certain subjects that you're interested in. Let's get them down on paper. Write down two, maybe three different subjects that you're interested in finding out more about. A useful set of resources for exploring subjects at university are the subject guides on the UCAS website. What we are interested in is that it gives a list of common degree titles linked to each subject. 
Once you have a list of subjects and possible degree titles, start having a look at a few different university websites. So head to the undergraduate page of the university website of your choice. On the Oxford website, we scroll down here and we can see a range of information about the application process and here information on the courses. And I'm going to go straight to the A to Z because I want to see an overview of all the different courses at the university. Now with this list of courses, you can go straight to the course you are most interested in or spend time exploring what's available. Remember, there are broad courses where you may be studying more than one subject at once, as well as specific courses where you are honing in on a specific area of study. I will also point out a useful feature here on the Oxford website. If we go back to the undergraduate page and use the search bar, entering a subject into this search bar will bring up not only the most relevant course, but all related courses as well. So, for example, if I enter history, here are all the courses with a historical element to them, but that's quite a useful tool on the website. So for task two, make a list of potential degree titles and start to explore different universities and narrow down the courses that interest you. To help this process, make a note of what interests you about each course. This might be specific modules that you can take or the format that the course takes. Just to sum up, by taking the time to explore our interests, to explore courses and see how they match up, we'll be in a really good position writing our personal statements to show that we know what's involved in the course, to show that we're interested and to show that we've got those skills to help thrive on that course as well. Thank you for watching. This is a video created from the Access team at Wadham College. If you want any other information, head to our website, wadham.ox.ac.uk. Go to the Skills tab, and we've got lots of different resources on there as well for students as well as teachers. That is the end of part one. See you next time for part two.